Hello everyone, and welcome to the 69,420th episode of Analyzing Evil. Today we'll be discussing Vivictus Asmati from Match the Gathering. Hey guys, Curious 6 here with the Kaladash Express, your number one source for universes beyond, and today we'll be discussing Vivictus Asmati the Dire, my personal commander deck, one of my favorite commanders. And I know it's not a universes beyond commander, but I recently did a stream where I judged my community's decks, and I don't think it's fair for me to judge all their decks without you being able to see my deck building ability firsthand. So I'm showing off Vivictus Asmati today. In addition to that, I also played this deck on stream not too long ago on like Try and Casually, so I'll leave that link down below so you can check out the VOD there if you want. And yeah, this is gonna be a super cool showcase. We got some cool secret layer foils, we've got some signed cards, and we even have a couple artist proofs in the deck, one being the commander himself, Vivictus Asmati. Let's take a look at one of my favorite decks and one of the coolest decks you'll ever see, in my opinion. <laughs> let's jump into it. All right, so let's begin with our commander, Vivictus Asmati the Dire. And going forward, all the signed cards or other foreign language cards will have another version of it right here on screen so that it is fully readable. But yes, this is our commander, Vivictus Asmati the Dire. It's a 6-6 Elder Dragon for Jund and 3. When it attacks, you get to Chaos War people's things. It's super fun. Um, this is my artist proof, Vivictus Asmati. I actually got this through the mail from Stephen Belladin's website. And when I ordered it, he was unable to fulfill the order immediately. So he emailed me and was like, hey, do you want me to cancel this order? I'm not gonna be able to do it right now. I'm like, no, no, get it to me when you can. I want this card. I want, you know, your signature on an artist proof of this card because I love this card. And when he sent this to me, when he inevitably did send it to me, he also included an Evolving Wilds, which I'll have on screen now. It's not in this deck, so I can't show it to you immediately, but, it was super nice, and I just want to say thank you to Stephen Bell, and I really appreciate that. I love that Evolving Wilds, and I love this card. So, the idea of this deck is to cheat out a bunch of big things by sitting up top for our library. You'll immediately notice a deck building problem as we go through, but yes, we want to set up the top for our library with the big things so that we can uh, cheat them out with Vix's ability. Super cool. Let's get into some of those big things real quick. It starts with Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Normally I play it on the other side because this is the cereal box Ulamog. Normally I play it on this side, but I was worried about making it readable. But no, I'm going to put a Scryfall Ulamog right here so you can see what it does. But yeah, cheating this out with Vivictus does not actually uh, get its cast trigger, which is, is unfortunate, but it's super cool looking, so it stays in the deck. And you'll notice that being a pattern as I build my deck. I build decks to look cool when I'm not building for the channel. <laughs> Corvald is actually really good in this deck. We are going to be sacking a lot of things, and Corvald's ability to draw cards is going to be super useful. Vivictus and him play together really well. This really could be the commander of this deck if I really wanted to, but I like Vivictus more. Um, and this is the cool Outlaws of the Junction Outlaw Edition secret layer thing of Corvald, and I really like it. All right, Godzilla, another card that really doesn't do much for this deck, honestly. It's in here because it's cool. It's not in here because it's any sort of good. It's really not, but man, how can I have a big guy's deck in Jund without playing the big guy himself? All right, Raziket the Foul-Blooded, another card that lets us sack our stuff. This is also an artist proof. This is apparently 24 out of 50, so that's kind of neat. Um, this has been my commander in the past, but I just like having him in the 99 more than being a commander. He's too much for a move on site when he's the commander. Shoulder the Apocalypse. I think I showed this at the intro as well. So it's, again, not doing anything specifically for the deck. It's not playing to our strategy, I guess. It does allow us, we do draw some cards, so getting a bunch of life is nice, and this is one of the ways for us to gain back some life if we take some damage. But it's in here because it's Shield of the Apocalypse, and Shield of the Apocalypse is cool. I got this signed in Magicon Vegas in Chris Rand's line. It actually took like an hour and a half to get through that line to get this signed because everybody wanted their Shield signed. But I think mine came out the best. Agent Frank Horgan. Yeah, so again, and I'll, I'm just going to go blanket statements out. Most of the big guys in this deck are not in here because they particularly work well with the theme, but they are cards that I love and are super cool. Agent Frank Horgan has no practical use in the deck, but uh, yeah, he's really big and he's from Fall and I love Frank Horgan. Okay, an actual uh, not Nonbo with the deck. Ozure Kazim, Deepest Growth. He gets us, he lets us cheat big things onto the board. I have not been able to find a foil showcase version of this yet. I found showcase versions, but I am only buying foils for my decks from now on if it's a commander deck, because I don't want to buy multiple copies of a card, so. 
Yeah, it's a little unfortunate, but yeah, an actual good card for the deck, letting us cheat out some more things. Ooh, another good card for the deck. Tire Grid, God of Fright. It has a backside, which I couldn't even tell you exactly what it does right now, because we never play the backside. Tire Grid's Lantern. Uh, very neat, very cool. We play it for the front side because it's it that betrays plus, and it comes out cheaper and it's the best. We're gonna be forcing our opponents to sack stuff, so why not take that stuff? This also gets removed on site though, it's almost never sticks around long enough to be a threat, so. Zengief, the Red Cyclone. I love this card. I just picked this up recently from a friend of mine, did in a trade for the deck. Again, it's not amazing for the deck, but it is Zangief, and I love Street Fighter. I used to love Street Fighter. I haven't played it in years. I haven't played Street Fighter 6. Let me know if I should play Street Fighter 6. I, I hear it's really good. But yeah, it doesn't specifically do anything for our deck, except it does force our opponents to sack things, which is nice. Brosh, Sky Raid of Care. So this is the from the Prince of Darkness secret lair. It's super great. It gives us a bunch of sacrifices, and... Honestly, this, this artwork alone is enough to put it in any deck that it can fit in. Harvester of Souls, absolute all-star in this deck because a lot of stuff's gonna die and we're gonna draw a lot of cards. Alpha Deathclaw. So this one's another really good one with the deck. We get to cheat it out with Victus. We, you know, we save six mana and then we destroy whatever we want and then we can pay seven mana and make it monstrous, which we should have at that point. We do make quite a bit of mana in this deck just through various means. It's pretty nice. Also, I love Fallout. When I saw this card, I immediately knew I had to have it for this deck. Trivnod Carnage Dominus. So, very hard to read. I will pull up another one. I love the art though. Thomas Baxa was there at Vegas as well, and that's where I got this one signed. I actually bought this for the express purpose of getting him to sign it when I went to Vegas, so I was glad to find one. And man, this one is stunning. Um, the dies triggered permanent doubling thing is sort of useful in the deck. It's mostly there because this card looks good. Don't worry, I'm not playing all bad cards in the deck. Cards I just like because they look good. Like Zeator is an actual good card. Allows us to sack our creatures, get some treasure, and deal some damage. I could not find the gold leaf version of this, so we're running this regular version for now. Gold to Stampede Tyra, another really good card for the deck. So you cheat it out with Favictus, and then you get to cheat out everything else in your hand. And it does a lot of work. The Capitaline Triad. I don't know if it's going to stay in the deck. It seems really good. We are going to lose some men of our creatures, but exiling things from our graveyard with a total mana cost of 30. Still seems like it's going to be a difficult one, but I do love this card. It's super cool when it does work. Um, just making all of our little dudes into big dudes just feels in line with the deck. All right, this one's in here because I wanted something Warhammer related, but I didn't know what. I don't think most of the cards actually work great, but this one's kind of cool because it does come back. We can use it twice. The Unearth is pretty nice, even if it's a little expensive, and it also causes some sacrificing to happen. And Vorinclex, Voice of Hunger, another cool thing to cheat out. It's a little bit of a stacks piece. It's really powerful though. Um, this one I might put up a, another version of. But yeah, it's just a classic stack piece. Also doubles our mana, which is gonna be super useful. And yeah, those are our big guys. Super weird top end. Doesn't really seem cohesive and it's really not. But man, when it works, it works well. Next we'll do our little guys. So we have Coffin Queen to start this off with and yeah, I'm gonna have to put another version of this. But she just lets us get stuff back that we sacked off of Evictus from the graveyard. Super useful. I love these poker face cards. These are some of my favorite secret layer treatments we've ever had. Zoyawa, Lava Tongue. I really like this guy. I think it's a little incremental value for the things we're already going to be doing. It's not a great card, and I probably would cut it if I was going to cut anything, but man, he looks cool, and the rule of cool tops all in Commander for me. Ewit, I mean, it's Eternal Witness. It's very cool. M10, Elvish Piper. So, this is one of my favorite cards in the deck, but this does. Like the Vivictus thing, except off, instead of off our deck, we get to do it out of our hand, which is super useful. Doesn't give us cast triggers, but it lets us cheat out all sorts of things. This card is fantastic. Azusa, Lost But Seeking, is ramp, and it's Miku, so it's here. That was the other thing. Most Miku cards that I had were just kind of going to go in the deck. I like Miku. I don't love Miku, but I think she's very cute, and I really like this Azusa, even though I know a lot of people really don't. Braids of Risen Nightmare. This is actually, it's gonna be kind of hard to see, I think, on camera. Uh, yeah, you can tell probably. This is the actually a texture full of braids. My friend Tim gave it to me. Shoutouts to Tim, and I love this card. It is super useful in the deck. It causes our opponents to sack more stuff, 
and, or give us card draw, which is great. We're always sacking at creatures, they're always losing something. This is another card that's always close to being cut. Mahadi Emporium Master, I really like this card. I actually cut this from my Negan deck as well. It feels like it should work a lot better than it does, but it never works out great. Professional Facebreaker is in here, not because it's the best ramp spell or whatever, or the best impulsive draw. I should put this to the side so I can pull up another one. But it's in here because it looks really cool and you can't deny that. This card is stunning. Mogus, God of Slaughter. Mogus is cool. It also four star points to sack things, which is nice. It's also indestructible, which can be useful. And it's regularly a creature in my deck. I do run a lot of red and black permanents. Deathrite Shaman. Pull this from a Ravnica Remaster pack and just tossed it in here. I'm going to eventually probably upgrade this to a different version of Deathrite Shaman, but this one's fine. Ignoble Hierarch, one of my favorite mana dorks. Um, the Exalted Trigger is super nice because a lot of times, especially when you're just starting out with Victus, it's the only thing you're attacking with, but it taps for all our colors. It's cool. It's Elvish Mystic. It taps for green. It's Miku. That's why it's here mostly. <laughs> Honest Rustine is really cool. It lets us set up for Victus, so if something already died or we did something out of our hand, for I don't know, any given effect, we can put it back on top of our library and then we can attack with Evictus. Mayhem Devil, uh, lots of things are going to be sacked because of this deck and we get to punish our opponents for doing the thing that we're making them do. But yeah, isn't this art fantastic? Prince of Darkness is absolutely one of the coolest things. Goblin and Archomancer, it's a mana reducer. Fierce Empath from Secret Lair, it lets us find things and put them in our hand. We have a lot of greater than six creatures in our deck, so it's just super useful. Fauna Shaman, I uh, actually need to pick up a foil one of these. This one's actually from my Pioneer Elf deck, and that deck is mid, and I don't need a bunch of non-foil copies of this now, <laughs> so I'm going to be picking up a foil copy soon, but I love this art. And that'll do it for all of the creatures in the deck. Next we'll quickly run through the artifacts. We have Heaped Harvest, it's a new card, I'm trying it out. Lightning Greaves, it's Lightning Greaves. With Foot Boots, it's also like Lightning Greaves. We run all three of the Talismans in our colors, so that's Talisman of um Impulse, Indulgence and Resilience. We've got our Miku Soul Ring. Of course, we have our Miku Soul Ring. And we have Arcane Signet. This is a promo from Magic Fest. We have our one Planeswalker that I showed you. It's Liliana the Veil. She's in here because she makes our opponent sack things. I got this one signed at Command Fest Orlando? Question mark? It might have been Vegas. Most things I got signed that you'll see in this deck, I think, were Vegas. Such as our enchantments, which we're going to do next. This Fable the Mirror Breaker, which guess where I got this one signed? It's Vegas cool thing about this one, it's signed on both sides. It's super cool. I love this one so much. Fable is one of the best cards, period, full stop. Doesn't matter what format you're playing in. Here's Revel and Riches. Creatures are gonna die. We should get some treasure. I got this signed. I got this signed in Vegas. Moldervine Reclamation from the Prince of Darkness. The incidental life gain in card draw is pretty good. Carpet of Flowers is here. It's ramp. Spiteful Banditry is pretty good. It's a board wipe. It also gives us a little bit of a benefit when our opponent's creatures die. New card I'm trying out, and I really like it actually right now. It gives us uh, it gives us food when we do our Victus thing, which is going to be nice. Sometimes we need the life gain, but it also gives us more permits to sack if we don't want to sack anything on board. Rakdos joins up. It is a reanimation spell. It's pretty cool, and it also lets us dome our opponents when our legendary creatures die. Next we go into our sorceries, and everyone's favorite, it's Torment of Hailfire. I'll pull up a second one. But yes, it's Torment of Hailfire from the, uh, god, the April Fool's secret layer. It wasn't actually in April, though. Anyway, yeah, it's Torment of Hailfire. It's really good. Victimize is very good. Rampant Growth, it's a ramp spell. It's really gorgeous looking. Not a huge Lord of the Rings guy, but this is phenomenal one of my favorite foils full stop period cultivate for more hammer just looks really nice regular kadama's reach i honestly like this art the most Barseek, harmonize it's miku it draws us some cards it's here because it's miku and it's honestly the best looking miku card we've had so far so yeah need to put it somewhere and this is the deck for it and finally before we get to the lands we have a couple of instants not that many Let's start with this Cabal Ritual. This is the From the Vault Foil Cabal Ritual signed by Kyrian Yanner at MagicCon Vegas. I, should, I swear I have cards that were signed at other conventions. Chaos Warp, it's the Fallout Chaos Warp. I really like it. Pyroblast, this should be readable. Yeah, this is readable. Um, it's in here because I had it, because I won it. I don't have a good use for it, but I like Pyroblast. I really like the start, and I think it's 
you know, it's kind of, it, it works in here. It's fine. Grizzly salvage lets it set up our graveyard just a little bit if we need to, so we can reanimate some stuff. It also fixes our lands, hopefully. FNM promo, Crove and Grip. Uh, this card saves lives. You should play Crows and Griff if you're playing green. I don't care what deck you're playing, you should play this card. Split second is OP. And finally we've got our lands. Now I'm not going to go through all of them, I'm just going to pull out some of the cool ones like this Fallout Junk Town in Surge Foil. We've got all three of our shock lands in the Infinity frames. This one's in its foil and I actually pulled all of these, I'm very proud of myself. I bought packs and pulled all three of these shock lands and I love them. This is the only foil one though. Then we have, what else is cool in here? We've got the borderless land warways, so Kenzen, ah, Miku command tower, super nice looking. This woodland cemetery from Doctor Who, I think it was one of the bonus cards, super nice. Got that, seen those, what else is nice? I love this D&D. This is the only D&D um, land that I absolutely adore. It's that layer of the Hydra. The rest of them look fine. This one is just the coolest. It's not in here because it's good. This is not a good card, but it is a cool card. And then all our basics in this deck are all Infinity basics. I did open quite a few <laughs> Infinity packs. So I have, what, four of the forests, five of the swamp, and three of the mountain. And yeah, I mean, they just look really good. I'd, they're probably cooler basics, but these are the coolest to me, at least for this deck. And that'll about do it for my Victus Asmati the Dire Commander deck. Now, I will go ahead and answer your burning questions. Why are the sleeves blue for it? It's because I had those sleeves left over. They used to be inside of, the deck used to be inside these Joker sleeves, because I thought they were funny and I like the Joker, but yeah, these wore really quick. Second burning question I'm sure you have, why does your Graeme Genic Bastion have Miku stickers all over it and why is it pink? The deck does not read pink at all. It's because this deck box is eventually gonna go to my Miku Commander deck when all the secret layers come out, but I need the Game Genic Bastion for now to fit this double sleeve Commander deck. And I'm sure your last burning question is, why are you so bad at deck building when the decks that you put on your channel are mostly fine, but this deck sucks? Well, it's because I like to not play very optimally when I play Commander, I've noticed. I'm not doing it intentionally, I just like putting in the cards that are fun to me, even if they're not the best cards, so. That's kind of the answer. Oh, and I'm sure you noticed while I was running through the deck, I am missing Scroll Rack, Sensei's Divining Top, and Ith Epitrace. And that's because I cannot find the foil borderless Sensei's Divining Top. The From Default foil Scroll Rack is also eluding me. And I have no idea where the Ith Epitrace and original foil can be found anymore for less than like $50. So I'm gonna have to wait on all those cards. Give any other suggestions for the deck though. I would love to hear them. I am always tinkering with this deck. This is the deck it's tinkered with the most out of any deck I have. And I hope you enjoyed. This was super fun to put together. This has been a fun video to make. I hope my community doesn't rip me apart too bad. Join the Discord if you wanna join in with them uh, sharing your hot takes on my deck. And definitely, once again, if you want me to look at your deck on stream at some point, join the Discord, join the Deck Tech channel, and I will be looking at those lists regularly, and we'll talk about them on stream at some point. But otherwise, yeah, I'm Courier6 of the Kaladesh Express, your number one source for universes beyond, and regular commander, and have a great day.